Hey, what's going on, guys? Clutch here. Welcome back to Hazard County. Guys, well, we're uh, going back out to the logging camp today. <laughs> Much more logging going on, I know. What am I thinking? Uh, I want to get the uh, the lumber mill. Mike's been hard at work out there. Every time I go out there, he's never around, but uh, work is getting done. Anyways, I've got some equipment ready to go here. I've got something new to show you right in there as well. Let's, uh, let's get to work on this. I'll show you around, guys. Bitter patter. Clutch simulations. All right, guys, we've got this new Clark forklift. Um, good little forklift. This is going to go really well over at our uh, our forestry area there. I, you know what? So the the uh, the whole lumber mill we got going on down there, it definitely needs something that we can move some lumber around with. Now, I thought about something. I need something maneuverable. It's pretty tight in there. I thought about going with one of these. Something trying to find one of these little forklifts. Instead, this Clark came up on uh, the old Kijiji, also known as Craigslist for my southern friends. Um and uh, this seems like a way, 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 way better deal to go uh, out there. Now, it's not quite as maneuverable. I mean, this little thing here, I mean, with the, the way the back tire sits back there, it just maneuvers in donuts, no problem. The Clark, she's a bit bigger, but that's kind of key. So, you know, a forklift, it's got all its weight in the back here. In fact, we were just uh, changing some batteries out on it. I needed to get this forklift down here to lift the batteries back into the engine bay. They're a little heavy to try to do it. I could have used that hoist, I suppose. Eh. Anyways, um... So we, we've got that forklift. The one problem I have with this one, the actual lifting capacity of this isn't oh, isn't that great, let's be honest. And you know, I do know quite a bit about forklifts, to be perfectly honest, guys. But uh, every inch you get away from like the base here, this back plate, that's that adds or takes away about 100 pounds of capacity from uh, from the forklift itself. So if you got something like way the heck out here, I don't know, that's probably like four feet out. You got to think, we're, we're looking at like less than... 4,000 pounds capacity off the the weight or the capacity of this. To be perfectly honest, with this forklift, I don't think the capacity would be even that much. I think that this would be way over capacity if you were to put the main, main part of the weight on this. I don't think it could hold my body weight. If I sat on the end of those forks, I think this thing would be at, at max capacity. But uh, the Clark should be around, I bet you that's around 10,000 pounds capacity is what uh, this one I would be would guess at. Be my rough guess. And just looking at the uh, the size of it, and you know what? So that would mean the other thing with this. So whatever the capacity is, the weight of the forklift is double that capacity. So it, I'm pretty sure this uh, the, the plates on this one say it's about 10,000 pounds. You're looking at about 20,000 pounds weight on this forklift, and I got to get that out to the logging camp. I mean, it, that's probably pretty close to some of the other equipment we brought out there. Um, anyways, it, it's a, it's a lot of weight for a small piece of equipment. Um, so first off, let's get this thing out of the way. We're going to be using this probably later on as well. This little forklift is, is great for small little jobs, but if we take it out to the logging camp, we had something similar to this out of the logging camp, I don't think it would work out so well. you got to remember that, uh, okay, so some of the logs it would be fine with. The pallets, I'm sure it would be fine with. But there's some stuff out there that we just don't know what the weight of it's going to be when we're trying to load it or move it around. And having a forklift that we don't really have a lot of necessarily headway or headroom with as far as the weight goes, uh, that could really cause us some issues. All right, perfect. Drop this back on in. Um, and it's so much more useful to have on the back of this trailer or this, you know, just this setup. This is an amazing setup to have for moving product around with, of course. So we'll leave that there for now. So I've got the big tax trailer out here, of course, to uh, grab onto the Clark and bring it out there. Now, I thought about taking this out with like my, my one-ton truck. Uh, the Chev, and uh, the one problem I was running into, I was like, well, that's 20,000 pounds. If that's 20,000 pounds plus the trailer, there's no way that truck could handle that on that old road. I, I'm, I don't even know if the Ford's going to be able to handle this, guys. In fact, you know what? I, I'll fire this up first. We've done some work to our Ford, if you didn't notice there. Let's see, get these up. There we go. Excellent. We'll back this on up. So as you can see, it's not quite as maneuverable as the other forklifts. But it's not bad. It's It'll still get me around. I can spin it around pretty hard. The nice thing about it, like I said, guys, is really the capacity of the whole thing. All right, let's line this on up. Get this. Uh, the controls are a little different from what I'm used to, mind you, on this one. But it's okay. Oh, digging our forks right into the trailer. Get her up on the flatbed. Awesome. All right. Drop this right on down. Boom, that'll work right there. I'll strap this down still, and uh, we'll get it going. Now, the Ford. I told you we did some updates to the Ford. You can see we did some damage to it the other day when we were going through the woods with it. So 
um, I had to do some work to it. So uh, we ripped off a couple of the fenders. <laughs> so I wanted to replace the fenders. We've got chrome fenders on there. They're not painted yet. I might just leave them that way since we're kind of using this as more of a work truck anyways. I got some fresh rubber on this thing. We've got some Nokians with a little bit more of an aggressive tread pattern for, well, being in the backcountry. And as well, we damaged that front bumper we had on it. So we've just got, well, it's basically a, a piece of sheet metal up here right now. Um, <laughs> I don't know what else to put up here. We don't have anything else. I don't want to spend money on a bumper. This one here, this will work. Anyways, so we had to replace a bunch of stuff on it. it it's, uh, yeah, I think it's all right. We managed to find a, uh, a brush bar back here as well to give us some protection. I'm a little bit worried with what we're doing with this, that we're going to end up with some equipment coming through the cab. And I don't want to be driving that when uh, that happens. So we'll put a protection back there just to give us that. All right, I think we're uh, pretty much loaded up. Like I said, I'll strap this down and we'll hit the road, guys. Oh, man. This uh, this could be a bit of a treacherous trip, guys. Oh, this, this forklift's a little heavier than you think. Now, I mean, I don't think it's as heavy as the, uh, what was it, the excavator we brought out there or anything along those lines, but I'm still struggling with this Ford. Oh, man, we're going to have to go the other route. We won't be able to do that hill climb. There's no way. I thought it'd be okay, but I'm just noticing right now it's it's already struggling on some of the kind of easier hills coming out of our farm. <laughs> All right, let's uh, hard left here. Try not to go into this field too, too much. Nice. All right. All right. Perfect. Onto the road briefly, and then we go into the woods, back on the logging paths. Oh, man. All right. Here's the hill climb. I don't know if we should risk it. The big tech seems to be a little bit easier for me to pull. It's not dragging as much on the ground, so the Ford's able to handle it. If I had the Peterbilt, I would do this for sure. Oh, man. Left. Easy way. Right. The hill climb. Longer. Shorter. Um, Hill climb it is. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Get up there. Get going. Go, go, go. Come on. Get up there. Oh, she's struggling. Come on. Get up that hill. Get up there, guys. Come on, man. Get up the hill, please. <laughs> so, it seems to be almost... Come on, get up there. Come on, baby. I think we can do it. it. It's slowly sliding a little bit. I can just see those front tires. There we go. She's gripping, she's gripping, she's gripping. Oh, man. <laughs> that is one heck of a hill, though. I mean, let me just stop here for one second. And you can, like, look back down here. Like, that's that's a pretty substantial hill to pull, pull uh, 20,000 pounds up. I mean, a great view from up here, too, just out in the county. Oh, man. Um, and then once we get down below here, we're going to start heading down into the valley to uh, where the logging camp is. This is a, a pretty cool area up in here. I really do like this area. Now, we've got to make sure we're on the brakes here. I think this side is actually steeper. It's just not as long. I've come down this a couple of times. I think we actually had the Bronco the other day down here. And I almost lost it right here. Just I came over the top of that crest and I had that. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I had the hammer down a bit and we almost ended up down in that valley right there on the left. <laughs> oh, bad. So another couple miles in and we're going to be heading down the valley here right into the logging camp. Once again, it looks like Mike is uh, nowhere to be found. I think the equipment's running. It's still running in there. And his truck's not here. There's nothing here, but uh, at least everything's running. That's something, I suppose. Uh, we'll, op we'll drop this off and take a quick look-see here. Now, like I said, I want to get this forklift off, obviously. This is really what we need to be picking up with the forklift, all these wood pallets. Uh, we've got more being made in here. Is this still running? Yeah, it is too. Look at this. There we go. Nice. All right, so we still got wood being uh, chopped up and put onto pallets. It's nice that it's all automated for us, but I don't know where the heck he's at. <laughs> he just comes here and fires it up. And uh, lets it run. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. I mean, I, I guess. Um, so we'll grab the forklift. We'll start loading some of this stuff up. I've got a couple pallets ready to go. I need to go grab that uh, curtain side trailer. We'll bring that out and we'll load. If we can get, I think there's probably six we can really fit. Maybe those three and these three pallets on there and uh, get that on that flatbed. But for now, let's just get the, uh, the forklift off of here. Fire this bad boy up. Sweet. And off the trailer we go. All right. Nice. Cool. Let me see if I can grab a couple of these pallets that are in here. Let's, this is the one question I wanted to really figure out with this forklift. Am I going to be able to fit it all the way inside here and then spin around? Because this is the key right here, is being able to grab a pallet that's really awkward to get. Like, this is incredibly awkward for most pieces of equipment. It looks like this is not going to be any different with this forklift, unfortunately. 
Uh, I'm going to have to fight to really get in here. I'm going to have to push this forward a bit. Come on. Okay, we can push it forward a little bit and then drop the forks right on down. Is that as far down as I go? All right, so push forward. Oh, too much, too much, too much. Back it up a touch here. Uh, you know what? We got to angle this back just a little bit. There we go. And lift her up. Cool. All right, I think we've got the pallet this time. What a fight this is going to be, though. Like, I have to kind of push it into the corner first and then try to pull it out. Oh, man, I don't know. I don't know if this is going to work for me or not. We'll, we'll keep on working with it for the time being, but I'm really not happy with... I thought we'd be able to, to, to fit this this um, forklift into that corner a lot better than it is. Guys, I don't know if this is going to work. I might have to get it in forklift. Oh, wrong way, wrong way, wrong way. Plus, I really don't like the controls of this one. And forward. Perfect. Let me show you what I was talking about as far as the um, the way the spans work. So like most forklifts, the, uh, the main boom goes up and down, as you'd expect. So uh, up goes up and down, obviously. Now you can see that there's an extension that kind of goes up on top of this one that goes all the way up. Now, what we're moving right now is essentially just the extension. So this is as high as we can go. Now we can also push up the uh, the actual br bracket itself. Which way does that one go? Is it this one here? There we go. <laughs> so it's, it's a bit of an interesting one. So I can raise this bracket, the back uh, plate, all the way up to the top now as well. I don't think we're getting much extra height out of it. That being said, we do have an extra bit of weight. Now, we're going to back down. You can see we can leave that back brace all the way intact. Or, if we want, we can just bring the brace down itself and leave it like that. So it gives you two different options for controls there, which is kind of nice. I mean, it does make an extra little setting that you can kind of change there, depending on how you want to run it. But anyways, um, as far as the forks themselves, there's some interesting options here. So you can see here, we can actually uh, move one of the forks each direction. We can obviously tilt back and forth. And we can move the left fork, same thing. And lastly, which one is it? There's one here, uh, which arm is it? I know there's one, there we go, where we could swing the whole thing left and right, which is really quite handy. Um, you know, usually to move these forks, you have to get out here and physically move them to, to have it on a hydraulic actuator. Pretty convenient, I, as long as it doesn't break down, right? Just one more thing to break down, I suppose. But anyways, I digress. Um, I'm gonna go grab one more of those pallets. We'll bring it out, put it out here and drop that one off. Yeah, I really, I just don't think this forklift is going to do it for me here. I thought it'd be, I'd have enough space, but you can see like I'm, I'm really kind of jammed into place here to get this to uh, sit up in the right spot. I had to push all the wood out of the way. <sighs> it's disappointing. I like this is great for the weight, but it's just not maneuverable enough, unfortunately. I just can't spin it around hard enough in order to get it in place. That's really, it's really too bad. All right. so. You know what? This is not going to work for us, guys. I'm going to have to take this back. Um, we'll be able to fix this up and sell it, but it's unfortunately useless to me. Oh, come on. Drop down. All the way down. In fact, I really just don't like the controls of it either, to be honest with you. It's um, it's just a weird control scheme. That's too bad. I, just the way everything is... It's backwards to everything we're used to as far as most of the forklifts we go and most of the front end loading equipment we have. Everything is kind of uh, just not working the way I would expect it to. And I'm not really... I don't really want to relearn a whole process for something that's not 100%. So I've got to figure out something better for in here. And what I'm thinking, maybe even if I can get something with a bobcat or something uh, that's that small, just to move stuff around. Do I really need to have all the extra weight that this Clark's affording us? Not necessarily, right? I mean, it would be nice to have those big logs to have an option with that. But I think if we got maybe a bobcat with a proper roll cage... Uh, something along those lines that we can really maneuver in here that might be better off. I don't know yet. We'll figure that out later. Anyways, let me drop this off. We're going to reload this thing. I need to go bring that trailer out. Uh, I'm pretty sure we can use the forklift that's on the trailer to load up, but we'll find out. All right, so we make it back. We've got the, uh, the curtain side, and I'm trying to use this little forklift again. I've got most of it loaded up already, but it... You know what? This is a good forklift, but at the same time, like when you have the weight out the way we have it right now, it is not, not easy to use. It's still a little bit more, like I was saying, I think we've kind of, when we have it right out of the edge there, it kind of takes away the, the whole strength ability of this forklift. Um, but, you know what? It's okay. It's, it's getting it done. I just don't think Osho would be all, all that impressed with me right now. But let's be honest, that's not a first. <laughs> Come on. Get up there. I think I can just kind of shove this in, right? Just kind of 
push it in a little bit further. Hopefully, come off. Oh, see, now that worked out well. I'm actually pushing against that back, the back piece. As long as I don't push it off, I'll be okay. Come on, baby. Get in there. Yes. Um, are, we, are we leveled up? Almost. Okay. I think that's good enough. I think we're okay. It's going to let me back it out now. <laughs> oh, man. Excellent. All right. Um, yeah, the ones on the second deck are definitely a little heavier. Well, not heavier, but it's just a little more awkward for me to put up there. Um, the ones on the lower spot weren't nearly as bad. But once I get up to that second height, because uh, it's actually four feet up in the air, I'm struggling a little bit. It's a little bit. It's okay. It's not that bad. Nice. Um, but I don't want to push. Come on. Don't do that. Don't do that. I don't want to push the forks through too much. Like, if we... Come on. Get through there. So I can go through this far here. And you can see it's a little bit easier to pick up, obviously. The cantilever factor of that forklift isn't nearly as bad. But now I've got forks sticking through the edge of the wood. And then that's going to hit the far side and cause me all sorts of grief. I... There's not a great way of doing it with this forklift. Is one of the problems I've quickly ran into. Maybe I should do, like, two... I don't know. We've tried that. It doesn't work. Um... <laughs> <laughs> don't know what to do. Uh, you know what? It's not going to be perfectly level up there because I mis misguided. But you know what? That's not bad right there. Okay, that's really not bad. I'll put it right there. Drop this down. And uh oh, jamming up. What's it jamming up on? Oh, it's, I think it's my forks. I'm going to back up a touch. Come on. Oh, I'm spinning tires. See, this is why I wanted the big Clark. Just, just a bit of a pain to get. Stuff like this done. Nice. And I want to push this one in just a touch, but we've got to be leveled off. There we go. And leveled it in. Push her in just a... Oh, you know what? Let's go to the far side. Push it in. We should be good then. Get this curtain side back together and uh, send this to the shop or to our cell point. Come on. Push. Push. There we go. All right. I think we can close it up, guys. Uh, you know what? It's not the prettiest load I've ever loaded, but... Um, it, it's gonna get it's gonna get some cash at least <laughs> all right so I couldn't get the curtain wall back on this it's not fitting because I'm not a perfectionist unfortunately and I couldn't close this wall off so we'll leave the curtain wall open we just strapped everything down as you can see now what I'm really curious about is what this is gonna pay out uh, so we had a one truck load of just wood uncut, uncut timber and that uh, gave us just shy of 50 grand I believe it was we still have about I don't know maybe 40 percent of a truck load of uncut timber sitting here in the sawmill that's being chopped up as we go. So we've only used 10% of that, or I guess, yeah, well, 10% of the load, I should say, of uh, maybe 20% of the load of that first dr truckload that we dropped off here. And so 20% of that has given us this much wood, one, one full truckload. Now, it's so tough to judge, obviously, when you've got a cut load of timber versus a full load of timber. What's worth more? I'm curious to see what we get for this. If it's anywhere close to... What we got for the uh, that first truckload, I mean, if it's upwards of forty or forty-five thousand dollars, that's going to be substantial because we just have so much more product still being cut here at the sawmill. Um, I don't know what we'll get to be honest with you yet. It's uh, we'll have to wait and see. So we'll bring this over, see if I can sell this off, and uh, we'll find out from there. But I mean, I was surprised to see how much wood we had still left in the back there. Oh man, this hill is, is going to be a fun one as well. Maybe I should have went the back road on the way out of here. Eh. Yeah, we're going to have to back it out. There's no way we're getting up this hill. There's no way in heck. Oh, man. Some of the hills coming out of here. I mean, we're just leaving the main valley here where the main bridge is down below there. And this hill is brutal. Barely made it to the top of this one. I don't know what would be better. It would, would it be better just to, to go with straight lumber? Is that going to be easier than trying to cut all this lumber up and bringing it out? I guess the, uh, the price tag is really what's going to be the determining factor on this. If we get some decent money out of this, then it's worthwhile if it's, if it's the same or uh, less, of course, then there's no point in me doing this. This is all for naught. In fact, we'd be better off to just shut that whole sawmill down and kick Mike back down to county line. So prices around the county seem pretty standard for this product. It seems like it's all about the same. Uh, I'm not going after the most uh, expensive one to do that. We're going to have to go way up north. And you know what? We're right in town. So uh, we'll just drop off the train depot. That seems like the most logical place. They can sell it for us. Hopefully, um, it's pretty close to, I think, for what the most prices are. And I know they'll take it. So let's see if we can uh, get in there. It's just an awkward drive to get into the into the train depot itself. 
is right up here on our left, and it's not an easy turn in. Uh, I can't remember where the turn is itself. I think it's right here. The flag is perfect. And in we go. All right. <laughs> it's so tight to get in here. All right, now I can never remember. Is it the one on the left? I think it's the left I want to go. I don't need hay. I need grains. It's the grain sales is where we go in. That's not exactly accurate. But anyways, uh, we'll follow this around. Zipper back in and drop this off. Hopefully, it's going to be uh, worthwhile, like I said. Guys, I really don't know what to expect here. Just so tight. Best driver farm sim coming out of the corner. Oh, yes. This ain't no gravity wagons. We can do this. <laughs> All right. I'll go in and talk to this guy and see what uh, what he's going to pay us off for this. We're unloaded, and total sale price was about 25000 I think, 26000 Oof. I don't know, guys. That's... I mean... Okay. For the same amount of wood, we would get 50000 bucks, say, from uh, from its direct, direct log sales. So say we got $25,000. we have got half that. Now, we only used uh, one, one... What is that? One-fifth, approximately, of it. So times that by five. I mean, yeah, I guess it's worthwhile. Oh man, this is so tight in here. Come on, get through. Um, but it's a lot. Of, it's a little bit extra work for sure. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> it's such a toss up. Oh man. So maybe a, so you get a third more, I guess, or two thirds more than I don't know. I'm doing the math in my head here, trying to figure out if that's worthwhile or not to actually have it all cut up and brought out here, rather than just taking logs straight in. It's really, it's really a tough decision to make on that. I mean, if it's a make work project, maybe if Mike's looking for something to do, maybe we'll do that. I was hoping for right on the, the the button for 50 grand, and we we only got like 25 to 30, maybe 27. I think is what it was actually. Um, is that worth it? Yeah, maybe. I guess is the answer. Maybe. Yeah, I don't know yet. Anyways, all right, guys. Well, I'm gonna head back out there, do a little more workout in the forest. But uh, that's gonna do it for us today. Hope you guys enjoyed. Drop a like if you did. Don't forget to subscribe. You know what to do there. And other than that, I will catch you guys next time. This is Clutch from Hazard County. Over and out.